There are four unique quests in Hogwarts Legacy that are each based on your house selection at the start of the game. I've played through all of them, and trust me, some are much better than others. In today's video, I'll explain what happens in each one, and then we'll rank which one is the best. Each of these has a combination of story and gameplay elements, and that's what we'll take a look at here today when we decide which one is the best. Gryffindors have a special mission with Nearly Headless Nick and a quest called The Hunt for the Missing Pages. Ollivander reaches out to Ravenclaw students for their help in Ollivander's heirloom. The house elf Scrope does the same for Slytherins in Scrope's Last Hope. Hufflepuff students get to speak with a former Minister of Magic and even take a trip to one of the most iconic locations in the Wizarding World. Now surprisingly, the Hufflepuff quest is likely the one experienced by the fewest number of players. According to PSN profiles, roughly 13.6% of players made it far enough into the game as a Hufflepuff to reach the map chamber. And this specific quest is required to unlock the map chamber. Compare that to just over 19% for Ravenclaw, 25.3% for Slytherin, and 25.9% for Gryffindor. Each of these has a combination of story and gameplay elements, but which one is the best? Regardless of which house, it all starts with the secrets of the Restricted Section quest. Upon completion of that mission, Professor Fig will discover a problem with the book you retrieved. Some of these pages seem to be missing. After progressing through a few additional main quests, you'll eventually unlock the house exclusive quest. How this quest starts is all based on your Hogwarts house. If you're in Ravenclaw, you'll need to speak with Mr. Ollivander who needs your help to track down a special wand he's been missing. It was taken by a former Hogwarts student named Richard Jackdaw. Now Jackdaw is the key for our main character to find the missing pages from the book we found in the restricted section, and this is true across all four of the house quests. That being said, things don't play out the same, and we learn different pieces of information along the way, but they all lead back to Jackdaw. Ollivander believes we'll find a clue in the Owlery, so that's where you'll need to go next on the Ravenclaw playthrough. From there, you use Accio until you find all of the Jackdaw statues. Then you place them in a designated location to trigger a cutscene, and finally you'll meet the ghost of Richard Jackdaw. The Richard Jackdaw? So, Mr. Ollivander was right. He goes on to tell you how he was beheaded in a cave and dropped Ollivander's wand there. He also says he never should have followed a certain map. Our character goes on to mention the book and its missing pages, which prompts Jackdaw to offer his help. And unfortunately, that's all there is for this Ravenclaw quest. The story is basic, and even though Jackdaw is involved, we don't really learn much new about him. The gameplay is pretty straightforward and doesn't offer much of anything that's unique to this quest. Overall, I have to say the Ravenclaw quest is easily the most disappointing of the four. From there, I would say the three others are definitely a step up from Ravenclaw. The house quest for Slytherin students kicks off when Headmaster Black's house elf sends you a letter. Scrope says he knows about the book and has more information on the missing pages. But before he tells you that information, you need to find a note hidden near the clock tower. Inside the mouth of a griffin statue, you'll find the note. This one says it isn't safe for Scrope to speak with you in public yet, so you'll need to find another note. The next one is located on a rock you have to climb up to reach. This message says you'll need to find a third and final note down the hill inside of a pumpkin. You can break these pumpkins with your basic cast spell until you locate the last note. This one finally tells you where you can actually find Scrope. Thank you for coming all this way. But how does all of this relate to Jackdaw and the missing pages? It turns out Scrope's former mistress was one Apollonia Black, and she knew about the pages torn from the book. And you'll definitely want to remember that name for later. Scrope mentions that Apollonia had a hidden grotto that could potentially hold a clue. Now before we set off in search of the grotto, we finally learn Scrope's true intentions for enlisting our help. Scrope believes that a treasured black family ring is also in the grotto. Scrope wishes to give it to the headmaster. Now in what I think is the coolest part of this quest, the hidden grotto happens to be behind a mural of the giant squid. And in a fun nod to the original Potter series, we gain access to this secret room by using a piece of toast. Once inside, we find Apollonia's journal. Shortly after, Jackdaw shows up and admits to stealing the pages from the book to try and impress Apollonia. Oh, and that ring that Scrope had been searching for? Yeah, Jackdaw already sold it. Like the Ravenclaw quest before it, this one ends with us gaining the information about the lost pages still being with Jackdaw's corpse and him offering to help. So where does the Slytherin quest rank? The gameplay here is pretty brief and is basically just a fetch quest in terms of finding Scrope's notes. Then you venture to the grotto to find Jackdaw, and then you have to go back to Scrope to tell him about the ring. The story is a little more rewarding than the Ravenclaw quest. We get a fun nod to HP lore with the giant squid, and we do learn a little bit more about Jackdaw. Plus, we first get mention of Apollonia Black here, and she's a pretty big important piece of this. So for that reason, I think I would place Slytherins comfortably ahead of Ravenclaw in the third place. 
And so that leaves Gryffindor and Hufflepuff for the number one spot. By far the most talked about quest within the Hogwarts Legacy community would have to be Hufflepuffs. With this quest, it starts immediately with a fun moment for Potter fans who really know their lore. That's because you get to speak with the portrait of Eldritch Diggory, a former Minister of Magic. Diggory had visited Azkaban during his time as Minister and was horrified by what he'd found there. He established a committee in the 1740s to explore alternatives to Azkaban, but unfortunately he died before changes could be made. Diggory's portrait believes we may be able to solve a decades-old murder mystery of someone who was wrongfully charged and sentenced to Azkaban. And conveniently enough for us, finding those missing pages may actually be a key part of proving their innocence. So not only do we get a very intriguing new story to explore, it also ties back to Jackdaw and the missing pages. To learn more about this mission, Eldritch tells us to speak with his niece and former Auror, Helen Thistlewood. We then pay Helen a visit who explains that Jackdaw went missing on his way to meet a girl named Anne. His ghost then appeared just moments after he disappeared. Anne was charged with the murder and eventually sentenced to Azkaban, largely due to testimony provided by, you guessed it, Apollonia Black. Anne insisted that Jackdaw had asked her to follow the map with him, but only after she solved a series of puzzles he'd prepared. Helen believes that by now, Anne has likely worked out Jackdaw's puzzle that he left behind for her. The only problem is that she's been locked away for years in Azkaban, with her mind slowly fading away. After we agree to help Helen, we apparate into Azkaban, and a cutscene plays as she has to cast a Patronus charm to ward off the oncoming Dementors. So the only way that you get to see a Patronus charm in Hogwarts Legacy is through this very cutscene in the Hufflepuff House quest. Unfortunately, you don't get to cast one yourself. Now, as awesome as it is to see Azkaban, this actual section of the mission is short and pretty straightforward. You can explore a bit of the area, but you can't use any spells at all, not even Revelio or Lumos. There is a bit of dialogue from the prisoners, and you can kind of take a peek in some of the other cells. Oh, and apparently there's a 1 in 1,000 chance of a moon calf spawning in one of the cells. I'm not kidding, this is one of the most well-hidden Easter eggs from the Hogwarts Legacy devs. And thanks to some eagle-eyed fans in the game's new photo mode here, it has been proven as being a legitimate easter egg. Now as for the mission, once you make your way over to Anne, it's easy to see how much Azkaban has taken a toll on her. Sure enough though, she has worked out the riddle and is able to tell us where she thinks Jackdaw's note is hidden. Methinks the feckless knave meandered to his cave. My fate was surely sealed in Upper Hockey Field. What is it, Anne? <laughs> With this information from Anne, we can now travel back to Upper Hogsfield. From here, we need to find the vault where Jackdaw apparently hid this letter. We do indeed find a vault, and after using Accio on a few of the handles, you'll unlock the doorway and can finally retrieve the letter that was originally meant for Anne. The fact that Anne never found the letter would have helped to prove she couldn't have been the one to kill Jackdaw, as she didn't know where he was at the time. It's only in this letter that Jackdaw reveals where he was planning to be. Now, as you exit the vault here, Jackdaw appears and congratulates you on solving his puzzle. And somehow he's apparently unaware that Anne was ever sent to Azkaban for his murder. What? Azkaban? Oh, poor Anne. I had no idea. So considering all of that, I think it's pretty easy to see why the Hufflepuff quest has been talked about so often. We get a great deal of information about Jackdaw, we get to meet a former Auror, visit Azkaban, talk to an old portrait of a former Minister of Magic, and yeah, you even help solve a decades-old murder case. There's just so much packed here into this Hufflepuff quest. But is it enough to take our top spot over the Gryffindor quest? Similar to the Slytherin House quest, the Gryffindor one starts off with a letter. Instead of it being from Scrope, however, this letter is from fellow classmate Nellie Augspire. Nellie lets you know that Nearly Headless Nick wants to meet with you. From there, you meet up with Nick, who tells you he can help with the missing pages in the book you found. How do you know about the book? And that it's missing pages? Word gets around amongst the ghosts. You were spotted with Mr. Sallow in the restricted section. But like all of the other quests so far, he'll first need you to do something in return. Nick wants you to pay a visit to the house elves in the Hogwarts kitchens and retrieve some rotten roast beef. As fans will know, Nick has a strong desire to join the Headless Hunt. He's actually planning to use the rotten meat as a gift for one Sir Patrick Delaney Podmore. Another great nod for longtime fans who will remember that Sir Patrick is leader of the Headless Hunt. So after heading down to the Hogwarts kitchens and getting a house elf to help with Nick's request, you and Nick then venture out to talk with Sir Patrick. 
In exchange for us helping Nick, he plans to ask about Jackdaw and if it would be possible for us to speak with him. Once you make it out to the cemetery, Sir Patrick says we can in fact speak with Jackdaw, but that we first have to find his head. Oh, and surprise, surprise, but no luck for nearly headless Nick in joining the headless hunt. Jackdaw's head is hidden inside of one of the large pumpkins, and you'll need to smash it with your basic cast spell. You have to do this five times before you can finally speak with Jackdaw and learn that he stole the pages from Peeves long ago. At that point, he offers to meet you in the forest and help you find his body. This quest has yet another fun lore connection to the original series with Nick and getting to meet Sir Patrick. It's also a nice touch to have us visit the Hogwarts kitchens, but to be fair, unlike Azkaban, any house can venture inside the kitchens throughout the game. I do have to say, the Little Pumpkin minigame and finding Jackdaw is probably the most fun of all the missions, at least from just a pure gameplay perspective, but which one takes the top spot for best overall house exclusive mission between Gryffindor and Hufflepuff? While the Gryffindor mission is great in its own way, for me, it just doesn't quite top the Hufflepuff one. And that's even coming from someone who is in fact a Gryffindor. The Hufflepuff mission just has so many interesting components to it, even outside of Azkaban. Make no mistake though, visiting the prison even for just a moment is the standout section of the mission and by far the coolest part out of all the house exclusive quests. Speaking of Azkaban, did you know it wasn't originally created as a prison? And remember Eldritch Diggory and how he tried to actually get Azkaban to change? Well, if you check out the video on the left side of your screen now, you can learn more about the dark secret of Azkaban and its Dementors. Big thank you to all our channel members, especially our Tier 3 Phoenix members, The Flash, Martin, Savage Khaleesi, and Dylan. As always, thank you all so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.